talk. I'm speaking today with the team at Highland Natural Resources, ticker symbol H&R. We, we've got um, four members of the team. They're all going to introduce themselves separately. And with them, we're going to get into the questions regarding the very significant um, operations update we've had today. So could you please introduce yourself today, gentlemen, and tell me your different roles? Yes, uh, this is Robert Price. I'm the, uh, the CEO of Highlands Natural Resources, and I'm real proud to be joined by all of my uh, associates and colleagues today, uh, Domingo Mata, Cully Kavnis, and Paul Mandel. Domingo, would you please share your title? And Absolutely. I'm Domingo Mata. I'm Vice President of uh, Engineering for uh, Highlands my name is Cully Kavnis, and I work with Highlands in a finance and economic evaluation capacity. I'm Paul Mandel. I'm a geologist with Highlands. Okay, well, welcome, gentlemen. You've had some um, exciting news out of Highlands today. Um, having started testing your painted DT ultravert technology in, in cooperation with Schlumberger, Laramie, and Calfrac, for those that may not know, what makes this technology potentially transformative for the oil and gas industry? Well, Peter, uh, thanks for that, uh, that, that, that question. And yes, we did start the, uh, the testing of our uh, DT Ultravert. Um, and the particular application is not only uh, from a diversion standpoint, but from a child well protection standpoint. I want to give you a couple just real quick updates, uh, Peter. We, as we continue to advance TT Ultravert refracting and well protection technology, um, commencement started on September 18th. Yep. Um, and Domingo, would you just give a little update on the uh, the operations from the field on on the test? Absolutely, absolutely. This is going to be a simultaneous operation. It's going to be uh, Calfrac will be pumping uh, the primary wells, and they will be in charge of the liquid side. And Slumberger will be uh, pumping nitrogen into the existing wells, the child wells, um, to to protect them uh, from uh, from the, the the fact that are going to be uh, going on in the neighbors. So the operation, as uh, Robert mentioned, started on uh, September 18th, Sunday, and uh, we expect that to carry on for about five more days. So this operation is going to allow us to to understand the pressure behaviors that uh, we're going to see. Um, and uh, how long we can maintain that pressure and what's going to be the impact on, on the long-term productivity. And, and Peter, this is, this is one of our uh, four areas that we're working on right now. Of course, at first we have uh, DT Ultravert, and that's where we have filed um, 20 patents. Yeah. Um, and then we continue to uh, uh, be, do the testing and commercialization. Um, you might remember from previous interviews, uh, we have a PV10 value of 58.3 million on DT Ultravert, and we're yeah. really pleased to have started that testing process. We're in discussions with various other companies to do it in different basins. Yeah. And then the second area is Helios 2. We have just begun drilling Helios 2. Uh, we're down to about 2,000 feet right now. And this is the uh, project in Montana where we yeah. leased over 100,000 acres. We, really, we had rapid permitting and development. And so uh, we had another uh, independent report on the PV10 value of that as a resource report of $340 million. And so these projects we start moving forward with. Now, Peter, let me say... Each one of these projects, they have risk to it. Of course. And what we have tried to do with the Highlands team, which are very qualified engineers, uh, financial analysts, uh, geologists, we've tried to minimize the risk. So what we're doing with Helios 2 and drilling this well, we're trying to minimize the risk. What Domingo will be doing is he'll be analyzing the data that will be coming out of the DT Ultravert tests. And hopefully as we deploy this new technology, we'll be minimizing the risk as we move forward. And then um, just as important is our East Denver project. And Coley, can you share with, with Peter and the, uh, uh, the listeners a little bit about our East Denver project? Yeah, absolutely. So the East Denver project is uh, what's known in the industry as a farm-in opportunity where we have acquired the right to drill six wells 
um, on three sections, which a section is a one by one area. Uh, and this is in uh, you know, an area east of Denver, Colorado, very well delineated by offsetting oil and gas production, meaning that there are a lot of vertical well uh, wells in this area, but also a lot of horizontal wells, the style that we plan to drill in the area. And we can look at the results from those wells, especially the horizontals, as you know, potential analogs for what we might be able to produce. And fortunately, the results nearby our area are, are very compelling. There are um, maybe two dozen Conoco wells just to the north of us, and some of those wells rank among the very best in the entire Niobrara Basin. Niobrara being, um, or sorry, the, the entire denver Julesburg Basin, uh, which is uh, one of the top three shale producing areas in the United States. It's a very significant oil and gas operation. So to be in the top portion, the top you know, of the distribution of results there, we find that to be really, really significant. And then we, we also commissioned a third party engineering company uh, called McCartney Engineering. And that's a firm that's typically recommended by banks. Um, one of the banks that we're, you know, talking to in, in Denver, for example, they, they use this as a, uh, a third party uh, and an independent party to evaluate and, and value potential lending opportunities for oil and gas. So we viewed them as a really, you know, legitimate and, and independent source for this kind of information. They gave us a uh, PV10, NBV10 of 21.5 million for the six wells yeah. that we plan to drill. And uh, they also provide us with a lot of useful data that we've, we've made public in our, uh, in our updated slides on the website. So a number of key points to hit there, you're getting 50% of the lifetime production in the first two and a half years. Yeah. So it's a very you know, front loaded cash flow stream also hitting payback in less than one year, about 11 months. Yeah, I, I, know, I noted that 11 months, and I thought that was quite a very rapid return there. And, and that's actually fairly typical for a right. shale well. What you'll see okay. is that they come on strong and they decline, yeah. um, but that's nice from an IRR perspective. You know, we have an IRR mm -hmm. from McCartney of 92% unlevered. It's very high, yeah. And, um, and, so, and that's really because of the fast payback here. You have a low, a low amount of time, so your IRR is boosted up. Okay, so is, is that what has been found in the nearby Conoco wells as well then, that sort of return and payback? That's correct. So engineers will typically use the offsetting wells, the nearby wells, to evaluate reserves, yeah. okay. and that's exactly what McCartney's done here. Okie dokie. I just wanted to push back a little bit regarding what was said earlier, um, regarding um, the information that was given to me. And the, there is a question that I wanted to ask about what you've used in the text there when you, you talked about bashing. And I wanted you to explain that to, to listeners and, and viewers as to what that actually means. Yeah, um, just to share a little bit more about Domingo. He joined us about three months ago. He headed up a Schlumberger technical team. Yeah. And he evaluated our technology when he was with Schlumberger. And then we recruited him to come with Highlands. And so yeah. Domingo can share a little bit about the, the overall DT Ultravert technology. Yeah. Uh, the uh, refract technology and the anti-bashing technology. Can I, just, can, I just say, can I just say before Domingo joins us is the fact that that is a very significant coup that you've done there in getting Domingo onto the team. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, uh, well, the, thank you. We're so excited yeah. to have you be <laughs> a part of the team. It was a coup. Yeah. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a tremendous opportunity. So um, what happens is... Uh, when, when you have uh, an existing well, it drains the area in the reservoir and it creates a pressure sink. So that area has lower pressure. So when you put a well in the vicinity, a new well, and you're trying to inject the fluids to stimulate that well do, during the fracking process, all those fluids have a tendency to go to that pressure sink created by the, the existing well. Yeah. So the problem is like all that fluid is going there to an area that is already being drained. So those fluids are intended to go to areas of new areas of the reservoir instead to, to, to access those hydrocarbons. So when, when the migration occurs and it goes to, to uh, the pressure sink, there are two adverse effects. The first one is that that existing well reduces the productivity. Yeah. And the second one is that the new well has an ineffective uh, stimulation. Oh. So what DT Ultraver offers is a, a method to repressurize the existing well in order to prevent the fluids from coming. And um, it, 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 that's why we call it bashing 
and uh, affecting the productivity of that existing well. And on top of that, it's going to improve the stimulation on the actual new well that um, that it's being fractured. So, so, so in essence, you you you'll make it safer and you potentially get greater returns. Is that what absolutely? Ah, oh, right. Okay. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you for that explanation. Can now, about that, the process that, getting information back. So uh, the the good thing is that this test is going to allow us to at quite key pieces of information to understand uh, how DTO traver uh, needs to be deployed. Uh, in, in new wells. We're going to acquire valuable information regarding pressure, injection volume requirements, and the interaction between the wells. So by uh, analyzing this information, we're going to be much better prepared to uh, go to the market and uh, inform about uh, DT Ultravert. Yeah. And, uh, and when you say the market, you mean exploration production companies, Absolutely. companies yeah. that yeah. want to use this technology. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. So when, when do you anticipate the initial results from these tests and what are the next steps for the, for, for the DT Ultravert? So there are going to be different pieces of information that we're going to get along. Yeah. So the first one is going to be the pressure information. We're, Anticipate to have that, um, I'll say, like uh, within two weeks after completing the test. Okay. Then the second information will be the flowback uh, information that uh, we think is going to be probably, um, um, I'll say, about six, six weeks uh, the, after we complete the test. And the third one is going to be the production. So we want to evaluate the production of the welders. And that's going to be probably uh, a few months after the test because. Uh, we, we would like to see how uh, the, the, the type of declines, and normally to analyze a decline, you need a little bit of uh, production uh, yes. records. Yes, and then okay. in, in addition to that, Peter, we are yeah. in discussions with uh, many other companies, including major oil and gas companies, independent companies, to uh, deploy the technology in other basins throughout the country. No, that, that's good. I mean, you, you've had lots of uh, large, um, well, mega caps sniffing around the technology that, um, since you've started. Uh, so that's a good sign, isn't it? It is, Peter. Yeah. So at, at, at present, you've, you've got quite a lot of, well, several projects and the DT, DT Ultravert technology. Regarding that, then, what, what would you say is a weighting at the moment in the sense of split of the portfolio, whereas a few years ago it was an 80-20 split in the portfolio, assets versus ultravert? Well, Where is um, it now? Um, you know, we, we do have the uh, independent uh, reports on both DT Ultravert, Helios 2, and the East Denver projects. And, yeah. uh, Peter, what we're trying to provide to our shareholders is to expose them, us, to high impact assets. And we're trying to do that where we keep our costs down yeah. to, a, to a minimum. Now, the, um, the DT Ultravert test, uh, we're, Highlands is funding the DT Ultravert test right now. Yeah. And the reason we're doing that, we want to commercialize it much quicker than before. So we're spending in the range of about $250,000 on this first test to commercialize it quicker. And then the Helios project, I'd like Paul to talk a little bit about the Helios project, uh, the timing of it, the well, um, how the, um, the process might take from a dewatering standpoint. But that's another high impact asset that we're doing at a very inexpensive Price. So the total cost for that is about 500,000 US. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have over 100,000 acres, Peter. And so that well is down to 2,000 feet. Paul, could you explain the overall concept behind the Helios 2 project and what we might expect as far as information? Yeah, as Robert pointed out, it's a high impact play. The, the idea is that gas exists throughout this reservoir we call the Muddy Formation. It's about 4,500 foot in depth, and it covers a large, very large regional area. Uh, we know that from uh, numerous wellbore penetrations dating back uh, as far as the 60s. And they would test this zone, and they would get, they would get water and gas, gassy water. Uh, the water would actually ignite, and it would uh, bubble and... Uh, so definite indications of gas, but in this in this time in the 1960s, the industry wasn't interested in dewatering. 
we didn't pursue coal bed methane or the Mississippi lime play or any of these dewatering efforts. So what we've recognized is this vast resource of gas and water, and we're going to test the idea of how much gas we can get out of this reservoir by dewatering it. The physics behind it are real simple. You, you withdraw the water, which lowers the pressure of the reservoir, and then the gas will expand. And as the gas expands, it becomes very mobile. And so we expect and hope to see an increase in gas production over time, as opposed to shale, for example, which experiences sharp decreases oh, yeah. in production over time. Okay, so with, with that being quite a low cost and you've already got quite a large acreage, is, is there a plan or do you envisage potentially buying more land as you see the potential of that helium project? Yeah, as we announced before to the, the market, we are um, currently in discussions with other um, landowners and um, so we can mobilize and purchase more land uh, in the future. We have also been in discussions with some um, air producers that are interesting, interested in the helium. Yeah. Uh, Paul discovered by um, researching in a log library in Denver, Colorado, in the basement of a log library, uh, the content of helium in a well. And Cully can elaborate a little bit about the helium market. Um, and what, what, what have you uncovered? Yeah, the, you know, I was just at the uh, Gas World, it's the Global Helium Summit, the industry summit in New Jersey just last week. And uh, they, everybody was really interested in talking to us. I was surprised because sometimes you feel like a small company and yeah. then you, you're not sure that everybody's aware of your story. But actually, most of the, the players in that industry were aware of Highlands and, and came up and were introducing themselves. And I think it's clear that... Um, you know, first of all, there there just aren't that many significant commercial helium discoveries, and we're working our way towards hopefully having one of those. And so people want to be in contact and aware of, of what might be happening there. And the second is that because helium is such a scarce resource, Indeed, um, yeah. there's a lot of concern in the market about what's happening with the federal cliffside field. So that's the Bureau of Land Management in the United States. And just to talk a little bit about the market, um, the U.S. government has controlled really the most significant helium resource in the world for, for many decades, and that's being decommissioned. By 2021, that's going to be taken offline. That's a resource that supplied 60% or more of U.S. supply and more than 30% of global supply. And so as that's being decommissioned, there's a lot of concern in the industry about availability, about reliability, and as a result, price has really increased. Um, so, yeah. so that's just a little background on what's happening in the broader market. You know, specific to our resource, we think if we can find this and commercialize this, it can be part of the solution for replacing that supply that's that's really rapidly going away. Indeed, I mean, you're you're, you're envisaging then addressing that shortfall or that stopgap come come either prior to or around 2021. Are you well, looking to get that ahead of, ahead of that? Well, I mean, I, I think we're, we're trying to advance it really as quickly as we can. Yeah. And, um, and the faster, the better, because it's, it's a concern that all of these industrial gas companies are aware of. Of course, yes. And uh, sort of, as I alluded to, they're all eager to uh, participate in any potential replacements. And so the faster we can get that commercialized, the faster they can lock in a long-term supply. I think everybody's going to be happy in that scenario. So, so, so additional to looking at long-term supply, are any of those larger gas companies looking at partnering with you or, you know, farming into the prospects that you've got there at Elias 2? You know, we, we haven't announced anything specific on that, but I think it's, it's fair to say that um, all of these companies are uh, certainly happy to talk with us and, and yeah. eager to talk with us. And there are a number of different business models that you can pursue here. Ever, everything from just a sale of the, the project outright to a long-term partnership where we would be supplying crude gas and they would be refining that yeah. um, and then marketing the gas and the helium specifically after the fact giving us some uplift to the value of our natural gas just on a, a price per unit basis yeah. or something even a little bit more involved where we might take ownership of the helium after it's been processed and market it on our own. There, there are really a lot of different business models. And at this point, we're just focusing on de-risking the asset yeah. and advancing that to the next stage where we can really start to dive into the specifics when we know more about what we have and what the timeline and economics are going to look like.
Now, I, I wanted to ask regarding the, the financing of all the different projects you've got going on and re regarding the movement today, I mean, your share price when I last looked was up something like 14%. And at some point um, within the next couple of weeks, I envisioned that the next tranche of warrants are going to be exercised, which gives you more funds to use on Helios and other projects. Did you want to speak about that, please? Um, yes, so far we've had um, 15 million uh, warrants exercised, with, yeah. which gave us uh, uh, sufficient funds to move forward and to do these these three major projects, DT Ultravert, Helios 2, and, um, and fund part of, uh, of Denver East. Yeah. Okay. So with regards to the, the, next, the next lot of, of warrants after that, uh, there's another five million warrants out there that yeah. have not been exercised yet, but there is in place mm -hmm. that, assuming the share price is over thirty pence, um, yeah. we can require the investor to exercise fifteen percent of the average of the volume each week. So we we hope that those warrants may be exercised as well, but time will tell on those. Okie dokie. So, so what kind of news flow can we expect? In the, you've already touched on it a little bit. I just wanted to reiterate, what kind of news flow can we expect from Highland in the next few months then? Oh, goodness. Peter. I, I know you're busy. What, what, I know you're busy. I think, you know? I think we, we already shared with you uh, uh, quite a bit. But, yeah. you know, of course, we'll have the, uh, the DT Ultravert um, news flow. And then we're dealing with other companies to uh, commercialize the technology as well. So that's going to be pretty robust. Of course, Helios 2, as Paul shared with you, the well's drilling right now. We should be completing it and beginning the dewatering process. And then, of course, we're looking at, uh, at Denver East to uh, uh, we're looking at, at financial partners to commercialize that as well. So it's busy. And, yeah. and let me say, Peter, as I mentioned before, I'm so proud of the uh, people we have working at Highline. High Highlands, they're working so hard day in and day out to um, create long-term shareholder value. And Peter, we really appreciate you taking the time on this interview as well. No, you're very, very welcome. I just wanted to touch on one more point. Obviously, you've got some uranium in the mix there as well. Did you, any of your team want you to touch, touch on that? Yeah, we have two, um, I, I call them outlier projects. Outliers, one of them yeah. is uh, the Gravity Prospect. The other is the Uranium Project. We don't have any intentions of fully developing that ourselves, but as we talked about these high impact projects, um, the uranium, for example, we're going to de-risk that. Okay. Um, to get a core and to de-risk it to the next level is about a hundred thousand um, dollar expenditure, and so we will uh, we'll continue to move that forward and de-risk it, and look for financial partners on that. Excellent. I've, I've covered all my questions there, Robert. Um, I want to say thank you to the rest of the team as well for, for, for providing that additional information there. Is there anything that you want to round off for, for shareholders and, and listeners? You know, to... Go ahead. No, yeah. no, I just wanted to say, is there anything you wanted to finish off and round off with? Oh, again, we have several high impact projects and we're de-risking them along the way. And so it's going to be, a, it's an exciting time here at Highland, Highlands as we continue to de-risk these projects. Robert, thank you ever so much. Thank you to the rest of the team. I, want to, I wanted to be able to speak with you guys again in a couple of weeks, months' time, and continue the great progress that you've made. Well done. It'll be our pleasure. Thank you, thank Peter. You. Thank you, Peter. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.